a Warhammer 40k short, Lost Angels. The world is aflame. Cut off by the Great Rift, its defenders are hunted by unholy beasts. Its populace immolated so acolytes of chaos may ascend, and its traitors bask in the twisted rewards of thirsting gods. The light of the Astronomicon is gone. There is no hope, only death. Scene The hive world of Quebec 9, a poor man's garden of naval fuel depots and regiments of Imperial Guard, has been thrown into chaos as the seeds of heresy bloom. In one delicate stroke of abominable sorcery, the great enemy has torn away the hope and stagnation of tomorrow to conjure despair in the hearts of today. Dark powers awaken, once brothers have turned, and the world's greatest protectors lie slain in their sleep. Rumors abound of traitor legionnaires desecrating his holy places, enticing the populace with dark promises of power and immortality. What other promise is there of tomorrow when the horrors of today so freely offer eternity? With the absence of the Emperor's light, his faithful are put to the test and challenged against odds more daunting than they have ever faced before. Head amongst them are the Adepta Sororitas, the Sisters of Battle. Twin preceptories of the Order of the Bloody Rose and the Sacred Rose have been brought to heal, whilst the Sacred Rose would hold the skies and orbit among fleet elements in the lunar stations. The Bloody Rose would be brought to ruin by the cunning rituals of Dark Apostles and the relentless onslaught of traitor forces from the unnumbered populace and planetary defense force. Here is their plight. Here is a short glimpse of their tale, for when the test of faith comes, who else will stand? The high cathedral of his benevolent hand was burning under the pale light of twin moons. Figures moved in the dark, flocks of terrified pilgrims fleeing the holy building's demise like ants scurrying from a flooding home. Raging tongues of the cathedral's inferno were swallowing them whole before they could reach the safety cordons outside, yet those were only false promises. Hordes of militant sack fiends, formerly of the Hive's local PDF, awaited them with blade and flame in hand to torch the innocent anew. Thousands of new lights began burning and howling agony under the watchful eyes of a small squad of battle sisters, overlooking the high cathedral from an impromptu landing platform far above. Within the flickering flames of that damnation, between the disparate shapes of metal giants and otherworldly creatures, Sister Sabrina felt the gripping terror of dark powers and the gnawing discomfort of abandonment that tested her faith like never before. The city was damned. Its armies had turned, its protectors lay slain in the streets and in their beds. The bastard traitors of the local planetary defense forces had changed their tune as soon as night had fallen, springing upon the sister's strong points planet-wide with coordination and numbers that even the battle sisters had found overwhelming in its desperation. Her squad and guiding Sister Superior Dominica had been on escort duty when Canon Estemeline had given the fallback order. Dominica sent the four of them back to support their sisters at the cathedral and their light gun cutter. Dominica had had confidence in their journey, as she alone would surely face the greater perils. Sabrina wished for that confidence now as she witnessed the crumbling structure of the inner sanctum collapse in an eruption of anguished screams from both steel and soul. Their honest little gun cutter and its pilot lay embedded in the Tenebaum spire at their back, still smoking from where the crack missile had sundered its frame. The traitor force who'd fired it were stumbling through the spire now, their hunting barks and footsteps stealing the heart-wrenching echo of screams from the city valley below. Sabrina looked to her sisters, their armor stained but whole, their faces donned and masked in the white and red of the bloody rose. The blue glare of their helmet lenses were looking back at her own with a seriousness that belied their hidden unease. The platform itself felt as if it were shrinking, cooking them over the fire below as the vaunted hand of their foe came at them from behind. Dregs. Turned populace and conscript washouts, the worst of the enemy's fodder yipping and bang as they came for her soul. Yet she felt suddenly distant and afloat as their tormented cries washed over her, as if a whispering voice were motioning them aside as a passing fancy to be ignored. Out came a pulling sensation from within her mind, separating her from this plane. A feeling of quiet unease festered from its touch as some malign influence began to reset her tune to that of obedience and disarming ease. It was just as the heavy storm bolter in her arms began to slip from her grasp that a new light began to sing. Gold. Gold and light from within her heart sang and pierced the otherness, corrupting her mind, its presence recoiling in pains of the shining radiance that made her soul sing its tune anew, and she no longer felt alone. Abandoned? No. 
Never. She was a warrior of the god emperor of mankind, and the only obedience she knew was for him on the throne. Her form began to glow, its emanating light pulsing as it enveloped her sisters. Sabrina stood firm, slapping the storm bolter into battery with a gauntleted palm. Sabrina returned her enemy's horrible sound with a terrible one of her own. A rallying cry that summoned the sisters at her side to face the enemy renewed. The explosion of sound, amplified by her battle armor, rewrote the corrupting bark of the heretics as she cried out in one pure tone, FOR THE GOLDEN THRONE! They charged. The sisters sprung upon the cowering dregs and hidden mutants of the Horde with a fury unseen since the Crusades of old. Their number they did not count nor pride themselves for, for all there would be, there was only death to be dealt. The bark of the heavy storm bolter made her augmented arms tremble under the duress of sustained fire, but with so many targets it was useless to ration her ammo. Sister Serena took up a hymnal song as she hammered her arm-length crozier's maul into a heretic's heart with an explosion of electricity, firing her bolt pistol into a swarm of apostles attempting to ambush her from the side. Sister Agathene, disarmed from the crash landing, used the brunt of her height and mass to wrestle several dregs from their feet and batter them into the stone floor with a cracking shriek of flesh and bone. Sister Lucia was the most methodical of them all, picking targets off in the crowd with a cycling crack of her bolter one by one. Their faces a mess of wet flesh as the bolter rounds reduced even the most intimidating mutant foes to waste with ease. Yet still they came. Elusia was the first. It was silent and without a sound as the crack of her weapon went unheard, and Sabrina turned to see her sister fall with a single cauterizing hole burned through the white faceplate. Sniper. Sabrina reloaded her storm bolter and aimed high, whittling the spires of her gantries and pillars and brief triggers before she resumed the killing of the horde almost upon her. Several rows of the enemy burst into shreds of blossoming meat, falling before her until the storm bolter gave a harsh, hollow click. There was no time to reload again as the next wave was upon her. She heard the wounded cry of Agathene over the beautiful voice of Serena faltering before resuming its tune. Sabrina threw the bolter with a clattering whoomp into the nearest dreg as she pulled free her chain blade onto the next. The blade revved to life with a whining bite of teeth that came up and out through the heretic's shoulder and neck severing his body as she adjusted and returned another swiping bite onto the next. Agathene appeared out of the corner of her eye. Surrounded by the broken bodies of heretics, she charged the appearance of a mutant brute from the crowd. The big sister grappled headily with the overgrown monstrosity, bristling with its transmutations that bubbled its bulk. Turning with a back step, Sabrina brought the chain blade up to kiss an axe-winging fiend's chin in a gobble of matter as she watched the mutant brute roar and bring its weighty forehead down on Agathene's head with a ding of bent metal. Dead? No. No, Agathene was still only for a moment before throwing herself back against the brute, wrestling its mass in a feint as she kicked out hard to bring the beast onto its knees. Standing over it, she braced herself onto its frame and slammed her broken faceplate into the monster's nose once, then twice, thrice, and with a savage bleeding cry a fourth time that saw the brute dead and fall into the panic of the dregs surrounding it. Agathene stood for but a moment swaying before she turned with her helmet broken but still worn. Sabrina witnessed the brief moment of her sister screaming her last challenge, facing down the crowd as another large form emerged from it. Serena's end did not come gloriously. Mutants and dregs hacked and bit at her from the front, wearing her down while Sabrina came to stand by her side. With Maul and Revving Blade, the pair fought and complimented one another as little as they could under the pressing weight of the damned, before a brute ripped through the crowd with an upward swing of some factory-welded hammer. The blow ripped through several dregs to connect with Serena, launching from chest and chin and tossing her into the throng of howling heretics to be ripped apart. Sabrina could still hear the girl's hymnal song as she reached the blade's teeth to match the brute's neck and began to rev. The scream of the chain blade equal to the cry of her own voice as she opened the neck of the hammer-wielding brute in a gush of gore. Its carcass became a shield against the greater group now, now whittled down and reduced to little more than a couple dozen more. The golden light still glowed, and they hesitated. But in the end, they only came when a hotshot round from the upper gantry sizzled through the brute's body to hit the left side of her faceplate with the force of a bolt round. Yet still she lived. The hotshot round slowed and diminished by the brute's body, falling with a slumping thud from her weakened grasp. The light 
The golden light was faltering as her left eye saw only darkness alongside an ever-shrieking pain that was burning the side of her face. She lifted and removed the helmet with a cough to see a heretic's descended jaw leaping at her with a spike club in hand. The pain was otherworldly, but if this was to be her fall, then she would bring as many of them into death's embrace as she could. Sabrina bashed the bastard's face in with the remains of her helmet, then threw it at another one coming from her side before she was pulled down by two more coming at her from behind. On the ground she made to rise, only to feel the frantic stab and bite of their blades and clubs at random against her armor's backpack and plates. Her scrabbling hand reaching for support found the hilt and security of a crozier's maul, unpowered and firm. Sensing their hesitation toward her chain blade, Sabrina revved it once more with a scream as she brought the crozius up into a man's head with a cackle of electricity that purified his soul. The dregs stumbled in surprise as she rose, with a vicious swipe against two more that brought them death by the bite of teeth and the cackle of arcane energies. Her radiance like flame now as she took them two and one at a time in a flurry of agonizing moments that passed by like a dream. A parrying sweep of the crozius with a follow-up of the chain blade. Swing, thrust, bash, sweep, fall, stab, sweep, rise, twist, and snap, and kill, and fight, and maim, and cry! Until she was swinging in the air, and the only light around was that of the pale and distant twins high above. The few remaining enemies were retreating, scurrying back into the ruined steelworks like rats as she stood alone surrounded by the dead and the damned alike. Sabrina took a breath and choked on it. Bloodied as she was, marked by an open wound on the side of her face that left her blind as the skin of her flesh hung limp in hanging strips. She was scored and thrashed well enough by nicks, breaks, and cuts all across her body, with pieces of her armor hanging or missing entirely. In the end, she stood alone of all her sisters, those here and those below. She looked up to the distant stars and pale twin moons to see new lights appear. Void ships. Dozens from what remained of once hundreds, recognizable only by the tear-shaped purity vessels of the sacred rose among a cloud of destroyers, frigates, and limping carriers, pockmarked by the telltale streaks of troop ships by the thousands descending through the atmosphere, bearing the golden marks of him, bringing his holy wrath upon this corrupted world. For he has never abandoned us. He only asks that we have faith. The master of mankind is with us, and though there may be no hope of tomorrow, Today I carry his mark. Today I bring only death.